So first up, I'd like to introduce uh, Roisin Doherty, who's Director of Learning Support from SULIS, uh, who's going to speak about some of the importance of inclusion for our learners and for society. So welcome, Roisin. Thanks. Thanks very much, Roisin. Much appreciated. Uh, my name is Roisin Doherty. I'm the Director of Learner Support with SOLACE, uh, the Further Education and Training Authority, and I'm absolutely delighted to be here today. It's a fantastic event uh, to have such a rich audience here today to, I suppose, reflect on how we can have inclusive uh, practice. Um, when Roisin spoke to me uh, about coming here today, you know, she mentioned two particular things, you know, why inclusion is important for society why does it matter, and the role of tertiary education can play in this. And of course I beavered away and I went away and I drafted up some lovely material to read out to you and then I scrapped it. Because I said to myself, everybody that's here today has inclusion at their heart. You know, th there's no point in me coming here today really to lecture anybody on inclusion because everybody here today is very well aware of inclusion. So I'm really just going to give some reflections, if that's okay, and perspectives to sort of help us, I suppose, get into the detail of, of what we're here to talk about today. So um, what I'm really going to do is just, I've picked out maybe three or four policy areas out of the thousands and thousands that's available on why inclusion matters. And maybe we'll just talk a bit, a few of those, and then maybe I'll just wrap it up, you know, about how tertiary education can support that as such. So the first uh, big picture, I suppose, as we all know it, um, you know, the UN Sustainable Development Goals and, and Goal 4 for equity in education. And, um, when Solace was working on the development of the Adult Literacy for Life strategy in particular, as well as the further education uh, and training strategy, that really came to the fore, the furthest behind first. Uh, and I suppose when we talk about inclusive assessments, I suppose if you're already in the system, you've been included to a certain extent, but I suppose there is an onus on us to ensure that you know, the 1.2 to 1.8 million people, according to CDFLOP, that require upskilling can access um, our, our, our service. And this morning I was having a conversation with some of the colleagues from Donegal ETB, Elaine Russell and Joe there. Uh, and, you know, we were talking about, you know, how do those people that aren't familiar with the system uh, of education past their primary and secondary school access the system? You know, who can be that one good adult, that one good teacher, that one good person in their community that can reach out to individuals to bring people into the system? And I suppose, it, again, through Dara, had introduced me to some people in Australia who I still network with, and they would say for inclusion, for education, it's, you know, not just about being in education, but it's getting into, getting through and progressing from uh, education is critical and I suppose that sort of brings me on to my next slide which um, looks at you know how are we doing uh, again that source data is from the CSO uh, uh, the Department of the Environment uh, by the way has some fantastic information about inclusion I think at the last count there were something like 300 inclusion strategies on their SDG mapping tool I found it a great resource to look at all the you know, government strategies for inclusion. Uh, there wasn't any specific one there on, on education, but it just in general, you know, how are we doing? How are things going? And the reason I put up that slide was, you know, we might be doing very well in, in education, but, you know, if you have no access into education, if you can't reach through your community to get into education, if you don't know there's a free leap card to be able to get onto your rural link to get into the into your further education college or education centre, if you can't afford accommodation, and you know I was listening as you all probably were to, you know um, the National Youth Council report yesterday, and uh, student after student after student talked about their fears about uh, accommodation and how they get accommodation for for their education. Uh, also, and I think a few other colleagues around the room attended the department uh, briefing conference last week, event last week down in Port Leash, where it was an event on the cost of education and there was a number of students there and every single one of them talked about their concern about how they'd get accommodation. And that'll bring me on later on to say, 
you know, how can this interconnected system, how can we in education support that? And can we move to a systems approach of education and be more interconnected? And I talked to myself on that as well. You know, how can we look across government and link in with existing funding to support our learners or look at innovative ways um, to link in and solve those issues? Because if we don't sort of support those issues, you know, uh, people won't access education as such. And you know, you know, if you don't have accommodation, it's very hard to do inclusive assessments. If you don't have good health, you know, your PhD, you know, how valuable is that? And that brings me on then to, um, well, I'll come to it in a minute. Actually, it was about wellbeing, but yeah, the slide here is about connected systems. And I'd just like to share with you, when we were, uh, Solace again was consulting on the Adult Literacy for Life strategy, we, you know, we consulted with an awful lot of um, organisations that were talking about um, uh, assistive technology and actually just again the power of listening one of those uh, participants mentioned about joint up government and the need to have systems approach and I'm sure you were probably all aware of it already but you know that EU OECD approach to joint up government and the systems approach to decision making that you know a decision that we make in further education you must be able to connect that across how's that going to work how's that going to impact on somebody across their life because as we all know we don't just access education just on that wee small um, square, you know, it's about our whole life and how we connect and us as policymakers, how do our policies affect, you know, the system as such and how can we use the system to address issues going forward. And um, don't have many many slides, just two slides left. Um, yeah, this, this is a framework which, which I, I really think is, sums up, you know, the importance of inclusion because inclusion for education is it's definitely important, but you must have inclusion for life. And I'm delighted to say that the government has launched, I think two years ago, the wellbeing framework for Ireland. And education is one of the dimensions of that framework. And uh, I, I'm not that old, I know I'm old, but I'm not that old, but I do remember a time where education was, value, was, was evaluated on the return on investment. So, over 50 here, you know, no point in investing in me anymore because, you know, the return investment isn't going to be too high. Really cut it out and invest naturally in, in the one-year-old because they have longer lifespan and, you know, get, get early years education. You know, it's that very cruel economics measure I always thought was very cruel, you know, particularly for a lot of stuff that, you know, um, Solace does, you know, community education, adult literacy for life. But this framework, and if you look at it, it's the OECD wellbeing frameworks. It's across many different countries. Again, I I'm probably talking to the converted here, probably a lot of you know about this framework, but I was really enthusiastic about it. I thought it was a brilliant framework because it interconnects wellbeing. So s s the country will be measured on the wellbeing and policy decisions will be made on the well-being of our state and how your well-being isn't just about education, it's that interconnected, you know, your whole of life, your health, you know, your security, how you feel, all of those different things, I suppose, is really the cornerstone of our education. Um, and I, I just thought it was, uh, it was very interesting to share, you know, how we could use this excellent model to, to measure our well-being for, for our country, which w the well-being will be the measurement as opposed to just the, 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 the return on investment uh, as such. Uh, and I suppose this really makes for how do we make better lives. Uh, and, and I suppose that's the critical thing of inclusion, isn't it, really? You know, how can we all live better lives uh, 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 across our, our lifetime? And that just leaves me on then to, um, I suppose, the transformative nature of tertiary education. Um, you know, there's thousands of reports to verify that, do you know what I mean? Uh, you know, better health, better outcomes, if you volunteer more, if you get involved in education, you know, you, you, it's better for you. Uh, uh, and, and it's, I suppose, you know, uh, the Healthy Ireland strategy would, would recommend that, you know, that if you engage in education, you're more likely to be, uh, have a better life as, as such. And, you know, how do we, how do we, integrate that into what we do across government departments and uh, and even you know how do we integrate that across our local system connecting in with local uh, partnerships local networks to lever that approach uh, and again um you know talking to some people in germany they would have said that 
the education system can't provide all the sports. You've got to get out, go outside. You've got to bring in the other sport organisations. You've got to bring in the other organisations that can provide support because there will never be enough in the one system. Uh, and, and really, that just, I suppose, um, leads me on to just sort of say that, you know, um, inclusion matters, uh, inclusion for assessment matters, and I'm absolutely delighted to be here today. And I'd like to thank you for your time, and um, I'll hand you back to, to Roisin, and thanks for your time and patience. Thank you. Thank you.